Hello, Palatine Chemistry. Today we're going to try to find the temperature of a Bunsen burner flame. Uh, we're going to start by getting 200 milliliters of water uh, using a graduated cylinder. We have our styrofoam cup nested in a beaker for stability. You can see that there's a large bolt hanging from some nichrome wire, which is very um, heat resistant. And I'm going to fill the cup and then start getting some temperatures. As we continue to get the lab set, we know a couple things about the water. We know how much water, 200 grams, 200 milliliters. We know the initial temperature of the water, 22.6. We'll verify that prior to the uh, addition of the bolt into it. Um, we know the specific heat of water, which is one calorie per gram degree Celsius. We don't know much about the flame, so we've got to figure that out. Right now, we're just gonna cook that uh, bolt um, I guess it's considered a hex nut. Apologize for you hardware experts out there. Uh, you can see right away I dim the lights. You can see that uh, nichrome wire uh, start picking up that heat really quick. Uh, and it's going to take a while. We're going to cook this thing. We're going to speed the video up and we'll come back to it. All right, now let's see if we can actually figure out what the temperature of that Bunsen burner flame is. So if we go to our equations, we know. Um, easiest way to do it, hey, let's find the initial temperature of that flame. Great, let's get the rest of our variables and we should be all set. So here's our data table. <clears throat> let's look at our information for our flame and don't have that, don't have a mass of a flame don't have a specific heat of a flame, uh, don't have a final temperature of a flame, and don't have initial temperature of flame. So flame is no help to us at all. The other two main players in this experiment was the nut and the water. So that metal and the water. Well, <clears throat> if we were heating up that metal, then we can assume that the initial temperature of that metal was the same as the initial temperature of the flame. Let's go and let's see if we have all this other information. We'll put it together and see if we can come up with an answer. <clears throat> Some of the information we were able to gather from this lab, the water, we had 200 grams of water. 200 milliliters equal 200 grams. We know that water has a specific heat of one calorie per gram degree Celsius. <clears throat> And we saw that the final temperature of the water was 38.8 degrees Celsius. And the initial temperature of the water was 22.4. If you missed that, you can go back and watch. Now, we could, at this point, solve for Q of water. That doesn't do us a whole lot of good. That's not what we're looking for. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to see what information we have on the metal, okay, on that hex nut that was there. Well, uh, a couple things. I went and found the mass. 
the mass of that was 30.4 grams. And it's made of iron. It's probably a zinc-coated steel. We're going to call it iron. Uh, and iron, the specific heat of iron is 0.11 calories per gram degree Celsius. And what we could do also is we could say that the since they were in a system together, the final temperature of the metal was also 38.8 .8 degrees Celsius, which only leaves us with this. What is the initial temperature of that metal? So now we can start putting all of this into the equation, okay? Uh, and it doesn't necessarily matter uh, which side you put it on. I could put uh, the water on this side. And let's say I'm going to put the metal or the nut on this side. And let's lay out my information. <clears throat> my water is 200 grams. Specific heat of 1. Temperature final of 38.8. And temperature initial of 22.4. Set that equal and opposite, negative, to the metal information. The metal had a mass of 30.4. Uh, it was, we're calling it iron, so it's a 0 0.11. Uh, temperature final, 38.8, .8 minus temperature initial. And this is what we're solving for. If we can get that, we can figure out if that was the initial temperature of the metal, that means that's the temperature of the flame, because the flame cooked it for long enough We've done this in past labs where we had metal sitting in water. We said, oh, the water's at 100. That means the metal's at 100. Well, whatever temperature this metal was, that's the temperature that the um, flame was giving it. Okay, so now let's go through and do some of the math. What I can do, I can start on this side. Okay, I can do what's in the parentheses. And I get 16... Point four. I can then multiply it by 200 times 1, so I'd get uh, 30, uh, I'm sorry, 3,280. And that is all I can do on that side. I can flip over to this side. <clears throat> I'm going to multiply 30.4 times 0.11. That's going to give me 3.344, and then going to distribute that in, okay, so times 38.8 gives me 129.7 and change, uh, minus 3.344 Ti. Then I'm also going to distribute that negative in here, and that's all I can do on that side kind of bring my equation together a little bit here with the magic of an iPad and notability. I don't want that. Get out of here. Now I have to get TI by itself. So I'll do 3,280 plus 129.75. <clears throat> 3,409.75 equals 3.3. 4, 4, Ti. I divide them out, okay, and I'm going to end up with, drum roll please, point. I end up with 1019.6, that's degrees Celsius, which is pretty accurate, that can fluctuate at a Bunsen burner somewhere between 1000 and 1500, um, but we're pretty happy with that answer, so that is how we would work through and determine, sorry, that's how we would determine our initial temperature of a flame, even though we don't have any information about it. We have the information about the metal nut and the water. We're able to set those two equal to each other, solve for the Ti of the metal, and that is equal to the